What up guys, That Comic Awesome here with another review doing Daredevil 598 and I liked this book um, and if you watched my last review of Spider-Man uh, 237, um, this book does not have a lot of action in it. It does have some action at the very end, but it doesn't have, it's a lot of build, but it does it right. It has Matt Murdock kind of at the focal. It has it at the focal point, And it has Matt Murdock being daredevil. You know, doing daredevilly things. Um, the only reason why I started picking this up. Um, I started this series uh, when it flipped to Marvel Legacy and started the renumbering. And I only did it because I watched uh, Diversity in Comics Review. And it actually looked pretty decent. So, uh, hashtag move the needle. Um, I've been picking up Daredevil ever, ever since. Um, so anyway, let's dive in. One, one thing, I am so glad they switched out the artist. Uh, because the art in 597 was awful. Um, here you get some... Some good textures. I just want to flip through and just... So, like, here. Here's here's Matt. Here's Matt. Last issue. This issue. Last issue. Look at Foggy. Last issue. Kingpin. It was awful. So, now they have... Uh, what is it? Who's on this now? Ron Garney. Thankfully, uh, and again, it, he adds a lot of really good um, darkness and tone, but it still kind of has the simplistic nature. But I mean, even like the coloring of the room where it's darker, you know, it the shading, everything looks a million times better. Is it the best drawn comic ever? No. But is it a vast improvement over the last issue? Yes. So this is a step in the right direction. So um, in the Daredevil world, uh, well, I guess in the Marvel Universe, Mayor um, Mayor of New York is now Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. Uh, he has started to make it more difficult for costume vigilantes to uh, operate. What's funny is you don't see any evidence of this in any other Marvel comic. Um, you don't see it in Spider-Man. You don't. In fact, in Spider-Man, Spider-Man actually has a a better time getting out and about than Peter Parker because everyone hates Peter Parker. So it, it's just kind of funny that this is the directive that they're going with, but it's only really happening in Daredevil. And they even specifically bring up Spider-Man, even though he's never had to really deal with um, any of, like, Fisk's policy as far as uh, vigilantism. So, um, after the last issue, it came out that Muse, who is an inhuman... Um, I don't know a lot about Muse. Uh, I know he had a big part in the last run of Daredevil uh, as a kind of a, a major villain. Um, but he is back. He has been graffitiing uh, on the buildings in New York, kind of more in favor of the superheroes. Um, Banksy style. Man, I can't wait for that. Cannot wait for that. Um, but here you have like spiders are people too. And it's Spider Man. And this is what's funny if, you, if you're here. So you got a news broadcast and it says, you know, you know, this time it's Spider Man shown giving the thumbs up or possibly a thumbs down depending on your point of view. So I'm gonna, if I'm doing this, like, that is not me giving the thumb to anything. Like, that, you know, that, up down like that is not that's not me giving the thumb up or thumb down just looks like he has his fist closed could have done a little bit better there eh minor quip um so there's and there's other other ones as well there's a loop cage don't be afraid of me 
Iron Fist, you know, I can do anything, I can do this. Uh, Moon Knight, I'm not crazy, I'm awake, and uh, She-Hulk. And of course, it all started with a Daredevil one. I'm not a crook. So, of course, the these paintings, even though they are ridiculous, um, they're ridiculous in the sense of like, over the top dramatic or um, they're, you know, almost parody to me if you're looking at them. But of course, Fist sees them as, hey, this could steer people in the direction of being more favorable to vigilantes. I'm not going to lie. If I saw like, it's like, I'm not a crook. It's like, if anything, that would piss me off more at Daredevil because I would, even though Muse did it, I would assume Daredevil had something behind it. And then now you have that huge painting on that building. Like me as a citizen, I'd be mad at that. But anyway, in to move the story forward, Fist is mad. He doesn't want conflicting narratives of people becoming um, more favorable towards vigilantes because he kind of has them in a state right now where he like people don't want the vigilantes in New York. And of course, he says, um, I like what he says here. Public opinion changes like the wind, and I can't afford that. My voice needs to be the only one that matters. So he pretty much instructs everyone to be on high alert for um, the next Banksy painting. So then this is where you get some really good Daredevil. So it's Matt, but what he's doing is, as his assistant is reading him these files, he's like tuned him out and he's listening to um, Kingpin's conversation. But not only that, so he gets kind of startled. But then here, he explains how he does it. And I like that. I like how he does it. So he says, you know, uh, I'm extremely focused because he just got startled. He said, okay, well, this should be a good one. Uh, blah, blah, blah. A bunch of boring stuff. He's like, all right, Matt, tune Steve out. You know the, ter uh, the timber of his voice. So he's like, focusing on his voice and then he finds like the frequency and he says you know the guy's still talking he said find it isolate it tune it out and then he's able to tune it out he's like perfect now to really listen and he's able to focus on conversations outside of that and I thought that was really neat how they kind of again you could you could sit there and kind of hear where he is tuning him out and listening to the other part of that conversation but the fact that they explained it right here, I was like, that's actually pretty badass. So Daredevil, um, Matt sits here and he says, you know, Fisk wants to go after Muse, but he can't um, because Muse is obviously an inhuman, uh, normal police, you know, Fisk can control the police, but you can't, um, you know, he can't, police can't deal with super powered people, you know, only other Superpower people can. So he figures out, um, he's like, I need to go talk to him, but I can't make it too obvious that I, you know, or it would know, he would think I'd had the office bugged. So he kind of waits for an opportune moment and he bumps into Wesley. This right here will come back and also a little very badass Daredevil thing. So then he talks to Fisk and he's like, hey, look, you're going after Muse. That's not a good idea. And again, look, I love the coloring of this, where you can tell it's purpose, pur purposefully um, lighter on the out, and Fist keeps his office dark, and the window kind of comes in. Again, is this the best art in the world? No. I'd actually probably, who's the colorist on this? Color art, Matt Miller. I mean, I think the coloring is probably the highlight, really, of this of this book. I mean, look at that. You really get a sense of depth, um, you know, on the faces and in the rooms. I like it. So anyway, uh, Matt tries to reason with Fisk and say, Look, I know you don't like the vigilantes, but this is how you probably should deal with the Muse problem. And I can make... He's like, I, I know I know Daredevil. You know I know Daredevil. I can make it back channel. I can make them to where, like, no one will ever trace it back to you. 
And Fist is like, uh, no. He's like, no to the fact that if you ever um, bring it up, I'm going to file criminal charges against you for conspiracy. And then Matt goes, I love this. Matt says, people are going to die, Fisk. And he says, people die every day. Boom. I love it. Oh, see, again, a lot of talking, but it is Daredevil, you know. If you watch my review of Spider-Man, I want to say one quarter, eh, I'd say probably one, I'll say a third of that book was Spider-Man. The rest was like, I don't even know, but it wasn't even like Spider-Man. I'm still, I'm still like worked up by that book. Another badass thing is he goes back into the black suit and he kind of explains why because he's like, look, there's never a need for, you know, I didn't think there'd be a need for Daredevil to hide, but there's a reward out on him. So he's like, I'm going to be smart. He's like, I might be dumb, but I'm not, I try not to be stupid. So this is what the other badass thing that he does. So when he bumped into Wesley, he like put a little tracker on him that emits a sound that only he can hear. Now, granted, he has to be within a distance of that, but as long as he is, and he says here, he's like, um, he's like, ah, Wesley's probably gone, I should have, he's like, nope, there it is, and he can kind of pick it up, and so he's able to follow him because of that bug. Again, that, it's classic kind of daredevil moves and the way he, he's acting. I like it. It's an adventure so then you find out Wesley's uh, kind of going around uh, trying to recruit um, villains to uh, to uh, so Fisk can appoint them into his cabinet. I don't know why this face for um, Hammerhead reminded me of the South Park when they were um, anime like Kung Fu Masters, and that just reminds me of Carton uh, Cartman. <laughs> That face. And then even like, even this Daredevil, it's very simple, but it's really badass. He's kind of just like looking down, like into the city. Again, I, I'd recommend it. Um, this series as a whole has been pretty decent outside of uh, some, some shoddy art. You know, as long as, I mean, what is, what is that? As long as uh, this team, so as long as Soul, Garni, and Mila kind of stay on this, I think it's going to be really good. Um, the ending with uh, with Muse, there's a, a really good pop at the end. Uh, I highly suggest you read this book. Um, subscribe over here, watch some more videos. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.